Okay, um, welcome back. I thought it would be a good opportunity to try a little bit of a, a game, a water management game, which is a risk-based game using seasonal forecast of hydrological input to a dam. So it's quite topical to this workshop as well. It's, um, <clears throat> it will work in a way that you will all have a, a sheet that you will fill in, but don't do it yet. I will explain how to do this as well. Uh, the, the information you have before you start the game is that you are the newly appointed water manager, manager for Lake Duel. And this, it's a reservoir <clears throat> that serves two primary functions. You, are, you, need, you need to make sure that you have enough water supply to Swoof Town. Oh, there's some problem coming there as well. <clears throat> and you also need to make sure that the safe town is not flooded. So you have two basic two, uh, objectives of this, this exercise. So the <clears throat> what you need to remember, I think it's written here as well somewhere, that you, you, um, you would like to see that the reservoir is full by the August 1st, at the end of this rainy season. And uh, that means 500 mega cubic meters. That is your game. That's your that is your aim for the exercise. So close as possible to 500. Uh, that makes means that all the residents can count on water all summer. But you also need to keep the releases below 60 megameters per cubic mega cubic meters each month. Uh, otherwise, the safe town will have damage to their to their homes. So these are two numbers to remember: 560. Uh, this re written here as well that you you're. In the first column here, you see that your release can only be between 15 and 60. So you don't have to remember it. It's written here as well. The 15 is the lower amount you can release, and 60 is the highest amount you can release. This is typically the way that, that's man that reservoirs work anyway. They have restrictions on how much they can release and how they also have a minimum they can release. And you also have the, the 500 up here as well, so you don't have to remember these, these figures. Uh, so you will be the water manager for this for the season from April to August, and you will be for each month you will be presented with the probabilistic forecasts of inflows. So at each month you have to make a decision on the reservoir releases for the remaining months. This means that you only need to make a decision for the actual month, but you can also write down if you want to make sort of a plan for the next coming months. So you need to make make sure that you have. Enough water for to reach 500 cubic meters per <coughs> mega cubic meters, but you cannot release more than 60. So if you exceed the level of 500, you're fired. <laughs> Simple as that. You lose your job, uh, and you have to maintain, as I said, 15 minimum of 15 mega cubic meters. So we'll have to we play this game as a, as a competition as well. So whoever is part, whoever is in the game after all, we reach first of August, and has not overtopped 500, but it is as close as possible to 500, will win a prize. Uh, so just an example before we start, just make it completely clear. You need a pencil as well. So if you understood that, so this is what the information you will get. Uh, now we are in the example box here, which is the gray one, it's already filled in, but just to see how it works. So you will be presented with the forecast. In this case, it would look something like this. So you will get a probabilistic forecast of inflows from March to up to July. As you can see here, you will have the, um, uh, the max and the minimum, which is the 5 and 95 percentiles. These are the numbers here given. You will also be given the, the median and the 75th and 25th percentiles. So you will have a range of possible outcomes. So this is your seasonal forecast. And you have the starting of um, 460. So here you're also given the, the sort of in numbers, in this case, your, your, uh, your forecast. This is the median given here in this piece of shape, paper here. Or you, no, sorry, this, this is what you write down as your, your release schedule. So for each month coming after March, you will write down your release, release schedule. You can change it at any time. You just make sure that it's the actual month for, for April that's, that's the most important one. Then you will be given the actual inflow. Now, in this case, it was five. So in this example, you, you released 15. You uh, received five. 
So your total would have been 460 plus 5 minus 15, and that's 450. So you do the math yourself. So you just fill in the table, and then you transfer for this new number down to the next column here. It's already done for you in the example, but you have to do it yourself later. So has everybody understood this? Is it clear? Any questions at all? Yes? I will give it after you've written. I will give you the forecast. You will write down here in the column how much you release. I will give you some time to think. When everybody's filled... Step by step for each month? Or for each month, step by step. Then I will give you what the actual inflow was. You will do the calculations and see how much you've uh, gained or lost. This is the prediction. It's for best guess. The actual inflow is the actual inflow. Yes, I will. After you've done your, your release schedule. I will not tell you beforehand. <laughs> That's a part of the game. You make a prediction based on this. You will actually get this. You can follow the, the, uh, the prediction you were given as well if you trust it. If you trust the seasonal forecast. That's, that's the whole point. We don't know actually the skill of the seasonal forecast at this point. Yes? I would say it's optional. It's not necessary. You can do it. You can do. You can do it month by month. The only important one is actual for the April. It's only the April value you will use. So the rest one is just you can fill it in if you want to. But don't care about that if you don't want to. Just fill in the actual month. We can do that and see how we improve the That's that's what we can do as well. You can see if what you uh, exactly. Yes, another question? Can you give us some idea of the skill of the model? <laughs> <laughs> All I can say that is uh, you will be only be given the 95th and the 5th percentile. So you will not, will, will basically is covering 90% of the forecast. But you have to realize that given, if you have a, a 50 member ensemble, for example, the observations will be outside of that predicted range two times out of 100. So you, you will always have a case when the observed should be outside the, the forecasted range. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so don't, use the model with, with care. Uh, I would also like to have a, a volunteer <laughs> to represent the group as well. That would play the game a bit differently. Any volunteer? If I don't get a volunteer, I will pick a volunteer. <laughs> Anybody feel up for it? A forecaster in the room? Okay. Oh, okay, we have one here. Very good. You don't, you don't have to bring your sheet. You can just stand here. So this is our, our volunteer. Okay, so let's start. Have you understood the game? Yeah. So it's April 1st. Uh, your reservoir is at 450 mega cubic meters. And this is the forecast you're given for April 1st. So fill in your release schedule. If you, you can fill it all the way in if you want to, or just for April. You cannot go below 15, and you cannot go over 60 in the release schedule. So I'll give you some time to think. So for the first month, for April, we have 8, 10, and 12, yes. And then for May, June, and July, we have 36. So what we can expect here is that we will get some sort of a larger inflow in, in June. It could be as much as 130, if you're unlucky. No, no, wait, wait, you, you, you have a... I want the median and thing. Don't worry, you, you will be play a different kind of game. You can have a sheet as well. No, we can. Does everybody have a sheet in the room, by the way? Yeah. Has everybody filled in? No. Just for April, just for April, just the, the, just the first uh, here. Do not feel further than that. Okay. <clears throat> 
So you don't, you don't fill in for 1st of May yet. You will get another forecast the 1st of May. So just fill in this. Sorry? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Um, it's good that you take your time to make a proper decision. That's, I like that. <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen? Minimum fifteen, yes. Yeah. And you want to close, get as close as, as possible to five hundred. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one here. So please fill in. Uh, but you can still see the, the forecast here, just for our volunteer. You will be given three options here. Uh, option A, option B, or option C. And the evolution of these options are using the um, median which is a dotted line, and the minimum and maximum of the forecast are, are the two st uh, solid lines. Yeah. So you can go for a release schedule here, option A, given, that the, given the forecast, which is kind of uh, intermediate. You have a very careful option here, cautious option number B, or a more daring option number C. So the question to you is, which one do you go for? You don't have to... Yeah. So, uh, since here, uh, when... The, the initial volume of reservoir will be 460, mm. and the final capacity should not exceed 500. 500. And here, it's a high probability of having flood. Mm -hmm. So at the first of the season, I'm going to release as much as possible water to have a conservative decision on June. Okay. So that will be I'm option B. To release as much as water as I can. So that's option B then. Yeah. Okay. Everybody ready? I'm going to for, now you're going to know the answer for the for the. So you go for option B. So the April inflow was 18. So you can fill in uh, the actual inflow for April, and then uh, do the calculations. Depending on how much you released, and you will get a new number. Has anybody overtopped? No? Everybody is still in the game. Good. Everybody still have a job. No, you can't overtop yet. It's impossible. Our volunteer, uh, you released 55. So your volume, you started with 450. Uh, the inflow was 18 and your outflow was 55. So you have now 413. So you're quite safe. You still have a job. So we go to the next forecast. This is 1st of May. Uh, the reservoir here now is for our volunteers. So you all have your individual uh, reservoirs. And here is the, the forecast for 1st of May. So you do the same thing now. You fill in how much you want to release from May. And you have uh, the May forecast here. You can also do the schedule to in the, the rest of the month if you want to, just to compare with your previous decisions. Okay, everybody ready? <laughs> oh yes, of course. <laughs> they will still fire you if you if you're over top. Okay, I'm just going to go to the next slide. You will still see the forecast here, but let's see what the volunteer says. You have now three options again. Option A, option B, or option C. You starting from 413, and this is the evolution giving your... Option A now is the very conservative one, very cautious one. Option B is a bit intermediate. Option C is a bit daring. Yeah, this, this is giving, um, you, can, you can use this as your help as well. So this is what the range you will reach if yeah. you do this one. Here is your range for this one, and here is your range for the... So, of course, my option will be option A. So, 
here, it's it's uh, it's more likely that I will I will overtop. But for this case, the band shows that I can still have the range of uncertainties, not overtopping. Okay, you're being very cautious. That's good. So you play for option A. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what happens. Uh, the inflow was 55. And you released, uh, so now you do calculations of your, of your um, inflow and release. Anybody overtopping yet? No? Everybody still has a job. So what about a volunteer? You still have a job, definitely. You released uh, um, 59 and you, you received 55. So you have 409. So you still have a job. So go to the next. Let's go to the next forecast. Everybody ready? <laughs> okay. Here's your forecast for first of June. So now the the uh, the forecast is focusing in on the higher range of the probability. So you see now that they have changed. They updated the, the forecast a bit. It's much more certain that you will have a large inflow in in June. But how large we don't know. So. Um, Please fill in your schedules. Okay, so let's go to the volunteer. Here are your three options now. You're starting with 413, so you can still have um, a very conservative release, or you can follow the two other schedules if you want to. Option B, and C. option B is just that you here's your release 60 and 50 that will get you well below the, the, the threshold but you will also be well below 500 given this forecast option C is a little bit less conservative or cautious so you will end up somewhere there but options A is um, how much water am I going to release here 60 and 50 60 and yeah, 50 yeah. So 60 is for this month yes. for, for next month, next month. But you, remember, you want to stay as close to 500 as possible as well, if you want to please yeah. your, yeah. To get their reward. <laughs> yes. And uh, the initial uh, volume at this time was 409. Yep. So which one do you go for? So for 409 plus 110 will be 520 mm -hmm. for the worst case scenario. And if I'm going to uh, release 60, it will be like 460. And if in July I will have the 52, I will overtop. No, you can you will release in July as well, so you can release the same amount. Yeah. So, so if you if you release 60 plus 50, that's 110, and then you will you you will be. Uh, still within the threshold, so it's no, it's no problem. Okay, and up here I will have 409, and I will release 45, and the flow will be 110, so this one is little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I will go for option B. Option B again. Because uh, here we we'll still have some uh, flood. Well, you see here that you will, you will, it's very cautious, you will stay way below the, the optimum. Given the forecast, you still will be uh, not overtopping here, still. Okay, but it's your choice. You, you go for option B. I will, I will go for, if I'm going to be fired, it's better to be in June. Okay, so the inflow was 120. Actually, more than predicted, so we're a bit outside the predicted range there. So, has anybody overtopped? Yes. Oh, hands up, overtopping. Okay, so you're you're fired. <laughs> Everybody that still hasn't overtopped are in the game, but you can continue playing anyway. So, how many people are still in the game? Only two. How many have not overtopped? Okay, good. So let's go on. A volunteer is uh, 
in a good position. You released 60, you had 120 inflow, so you have 469. So let's go to the next for last forecast for 1st of July. Uh, your, your reservoir is uh, 469. You have your own reservoirs out there. So here's the, here's the forecast. So fill in your schedules. Can you tell us the numbers? Oh, sorry. The numbers are uh, 19 for the lower, 21 for the median, and 28 for the, for the top one. So given this forecast and you have 469, you have three options. They are still the very cautious one, the not so cautious one, and the... I'm going to release as low as water as possible. Okay. Which is 25? Yeah. Yeah, this is my option. Everybody filled in their schedules? Okay, so let's go to option B. So the inflow was 22. And uh, how many are still in the game? And our volunteer is still in the game. But not getting their reward. Well, <laughs> we don't know yet. You have 466. What's the optimal solution? <laughs> okay, so the, we have reached the a game over now. So now we we'll see who is closest to 500, which still hasn't overtopped. You got 500? Oh. Wow. I don't think it's happened before. <laughs> well done. So you will be get a bonus from the from the from, from the you'll be promoted. Very good. But I also think that our volunteer did an excellent job. Because he has the exact volume, so every. No, he's fine, he's fine. <laughs> but here you go, I'll put it here as well. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, so that was the game. We, um, within the hydraulic community, we have um, an organization called HEPEX. I don't know if you've heard of this before. Uh, it's called the hydraulic experiment, um, hydraulic ensemble prediction experiment. So we are doing this uh, sessions at EGU, and we try each year to have a different kind of game, which is sort of playful but still has, has a topic on, on uh, probabilities and seasonal forecast. So uh, I can actually, uh, if, you, if I collect these afterwards, I will use them for some research as well. So you've also been part of a research experiment, which is nice to know. And um, that was my game, first game. Um, I do have another one if you want to do it or if you want to go to a discussion. Play a game? Yeah? Okay, let's play another game. It's a little bit different, but it's, uh, uh, it's also played at um, one of these HEPIC sessions. I have another uh, schedule for you to, or another paper for you to use as well. So it's one each. Uh, this game is more focused on how to interpret ensemble forecasts. So it's called the peak box game because it's, it's based on research done by Massimiliano Sappa and Kete Lichti in uh, Switzerland where they developed a technique to, to pick the best ensemble member out of an ensemble. So the way that this game works is that uh, it's based on the, the wisdom of the crowd, which is the process of taking into account sort of a collective opinion of a group of individuals rather than a single expert to answer a question. And it's been shown that large groups aggregated answers to questions involving quantity estimation, general world knowledge and spatial reasoning has to generally be found to be as good as and often better as the answer given by any individuals within the group. And this is a paper from 1907 by a guy called Galton, published in Nature, where he, uh, he asked 
787 people to estimate the weight in pounds of a European muskox, which is a, called the European bison. And they all gave their estimates in pounds, and he collected this information. And the median of the crowd wisdom, or the estimates, were 1,207 uh, pounds, whereas the actual weight was 1,198. So that gave an error of the crowd of less than 1%. And this has been used in other things as well. Maybe you've seen this game called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? So, so there's one option there to ask the audience. And they are actually correct in 90% of the time. And this is quite amazing because they are, for, questions can be anything. The people are just a random group of people or happen to spend a weekday in a TV studio. So they do, they do have some general common knowledge, common wisdom. And uh, we're going to try to play this game um, of wisdom using um, an ensemble forecast, which is also sort of a collective idea of, of what's going to be the evolution in, a, in the stream. So you will be given an example like this. You will have the uh, runoff, the measured runoff here in blue, and the yellow one is the uh, runoff used using observations. So te precipitation temperature observ observations up to the starting date, and then you'll be given the um, discharge, uh, ensemble discharge. So the question is, we're going to try to answer this. As a crowd of members have more wisdom than a single valued forecast. So the game is played like this. For each time uh, on the sheet, you have uh, four different cases. You will start with them um, one by one. So you will fill in how big the observed peak discharge will be and at what time. So for each case, you will put in um, a, an X mark on the sheet where you think that the, uh, uh, how big the peak discharge will be and at what time it will occur. And then you will be filling in these, these numbers here, which is a coordinate system. So you will fill in G26 in this case. Uh, so you fill in your coordinates for each case. So I will give you four examples. So you just do one at a time. Everybody understood how it works? So you do your estimate of where you think that the, the, magnet, the maximum peak discharge will be and at what time, and you fill it in the paper. And afterwards, I will give you the answer. But you will be doing all the examples first. So do you have to choose one of the curves? You can choose freely. Okay. Can any point. Any points. Any points. So this is just the... the um, yeah, the ensemble forecast just to help you to try to estimate where you think that the peak discharge maximum and the minimum will be, or maximum and the timing will be. So it doesn't have to be on a certain forecast. It can be anywhere. And the catchment for your information is a small catchment in Switzerland, 186 kilometers. It's quite flashy forecast uh, catchment. And uh, we have the first forecast here was issued on 25th of April 2013. And this is your, your forecast. So yeah, please, for the first example, fill in when you think that your peak discharge will be in terms of amount and time. So I'll give you 60 seconds. Um, this is based on a 13 member, I think it is. Sorry? Just the time of the discharge or the, the amount? Both, both of them, timing and amount. So you will fill in somewhere here where you, th where you think that the, here you have the discharge amount okay. and here you have the timing. Okay, everybody filled in their sheets. Somebody still thinking? No? Okay. Next uh, forecast is for 26th of April. Now you have a new forecasting system there, so please fill in when you think that the peak discharge will be and how high it will be.
Is anybody still thinking? No, there's, there's no penalties for this one. It's just getting as close as possible to the actual. Okay, I move to the next one. You have it on your papers there as well. Number three, if you turn over your papers. Okay, so let's move to the last one. Okay, is everybody ready? Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> we can use a system or a method called peak box to give an estimation. This is what they base this, this exercise on. So the, the way peak box work is that you, you mark the highest peak discharge of each individual member. Then you draw boxes around the quantiles in timing and magnitude. So here are the box quantiles for the, piece, for the 75th and 25th quantile in terms of discharge, and also for, for timing. And you also have the, the, um, the, ac the maximum amount. Now, if you put in the median for the, for, the, uh, uh, for the discharge peak and the timing, you will end up with the best estimate. So the intercept of the median and peak timing and peak magnitude. So this is the way that the, the peak box works. And uh, it's, this has been apply, applied to the same situation that you had before as well. So for each of these ones, you will see, you will get an estimate using this peak box, peak box method. So for the first one, here's the solution. Uh, can I just ask you to shift with, with your neighbor so you don't uh, correct your own sheet? So now you're going to correct the, your neighbor's sheet. And you're going to count the number of boxes you are away. I will explain how this works as well. So you correct somebody else's, OK? No, we're going to compete against the peak box as well. So you will get, yes, you will see who, who one is uh, closest to the actual observations. And we'll see how, if you can beat this peak box method as well. So for the first case, the peak box estimated that the discharge would be on the J36. That was the estimate. The actual solution from observations was at H35. That was the observed peak discharge. So the peak box errors was one box in timing and two boxes in volume. So a total of three boxes. So you do the same now for your, for your sheets. You count how off, you, how off your neighbor is in terms of timing and volume. And then you add it up. So it's not, this, not a diagonal line. We're just going like a, you know, vertical and then horizontal. Yes, from the observed. So the observations is ho you're comparing with H35. Sounds like a bingo. Yeah. So H35 is your observation. So you see how much your neighbors were off from H35. Is anybody still filling in? So that was for the first first one. So just do the first one. 
Does, the pick box is, is not uh, your concern. That's just a comparison. What should we fill in there? Sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. That, so the, the, the error in timing in the error in the peak. That's the error in the peak box. No, the error, error, in, error in timing and the error in peak. So the, the, the solution was H35 and your dumb put C26. Oh, in total, you mean? Oh, that's for the, for the first one. And then it's, uh, it's going to be 9 for that one. So you sum up the, the errors in magnitude and peak. Is somebody still uh, working on this? Is everybody understood? Somebody who's not filled in yet? So you compare your you compare this one, H thirty five, with what your neighbor what your neighbor put, and then you count the number of boxes in each direction. This is this is the peak box estimates, but you will have put somewhere here. So you have to count the number of boxes in both directions. And then you sum them up. Peak is in the amplitude, exactly. So the amplitude error and the timing error. Okay. So the next solution, the next forecast. So the peak box estimate, which we're competing against, was H30. The actual observations was G31. So you compare your neighbor's result with the, with the G31. Just for a comparison, the peak box error was only two boxes away. So G31, has everybody filled in? Okay, let's go to the next one. So for the third forecast, the peak box estimate was a G26, and the solution from observations was G27. So in this case, it was very, very close. Okay, somebody still filling in? So let's go to the last one then. So the, the peak box estimate was at one I24, whereas the actual observation was at H23. H23 is the correct one. So H23 is the correct answer. Has everybody filled in? Somebody still filling in? So what you do now, you sum up the, the neighbor errors in total from all of the four cases. So the total error from the peak box estimate was eight boxes. Anybody beat eight boxes, less than eight boxes error in total for all the four cases? No. No one? Has anyone had less than, than uh, ten errors? Ten? Nine. Nine, okay. We have a winner. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> An applaud. Yeah. Thank you. That was very good. So basically, you're as good as um, an automated system to come. <laughs> so the prize was, was some Swiss chocolate. I'm not sure this is Swiss chocolate, but. Uh, <laughs> 
So if you want to read more about this and also other uh, blog posts about um, hydraulical experiments, uh, you can visit this website as well. And you find both of these games here. You can download them and use them if you want to use them for your, your own purposes, for education and so on. So, and here's also the, uh, the reference to how this, um, this peak flow box approach is, is described as well, how you can use it. So, but the forecaster is still better, or almost as good as, as an automated system. It's good to know. <laughs> I don't think that anybody has ever beaten the peak box. So very, very close. Good effort. So that's it for me. Thank you.